Hey, kia ora, Tifano, Marky here. I've had a request for a song to analyse and pick apart as part of the Psycho Songs series. And it's, it's kind of been an interesting challenge, actually, being given a song by somebody else, because the songs so far have been songs that I've been quite familiar with, I've listened to for a long time, thought about a lot. So uh, somebody hits me with a, another song. It's, it's quite interesting. It's good. I like it. Now, generally speaking, I don't do record, I do requests, unless it's on my Patreon channel. Uh, so this is like a special privilege that I offer to patrons, people that help me out financially. But this request uh, has come through YouTube and it's from somebody that, that plans to join me on Patreon and it's from a member of the aristocracy as well. So I can't say no. So this is a request from Lady Venning. Uh, she will know who she is. Uh, we were briefly married out in Africa. Um, <laughs> don't take any of that too seriously. And I was really grateful because it was a band I'd never heard of before and it's a fantastic song, really, really like it. So what we're going to be talking about is a song called Wide Awake by a band called The Twang, who I you know, didn't know from Adam before. So The Twang, uh, according to uh, the great oracle Wikipedia, uh, a, a part of the genre known as baggy, which I think is where people like Happy Mondays and, and bands like that come from. Um, and I've I've always kind of been a bit aversive to to that kind of music. I don't I don't know, a bit snobby maybe. I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of I like goth. I like kind of you know good old fashioned hairy rock. But but that kind of scene, I don't know. It seems to be kind of young people being hip, and uh, it kind of puts me off a little bit. Um, so I think some of the, some of the, uh, like the accents and the way people talk, I don't know, it's just a bit kind of, maybe it's because I'm a southern pansy and it's a kind of northern thing, I don't know. Uh, it's interesting, this band come from Birmingham, they, they sing with some quite interesting sort of accents, but not a Brummie accent, which is probably probably a good idea no offense to anyone from Birmingham but it's it's not an accent that's that's been equated with rock and roll I mean rock and you know heavy rock kind of originated in Birmingham with Black Sabbath and Judas Priest but they they never they never sang Brummy um so so I don't know what I think about the 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 sound of the the voice and the accent of the the lead singer I think I kind of slightly kind of I don't know it's sort of a rather rough young people um god I'm getting old so, fantastic sound, brilliant guitar sound, lovely, uh, lovely, lovely sound, really, really like it, and a, a great album, I've listened to a little bit of the rest of the album. So, Wide Awake, uh, Lady Venning uh, tells me, uh, with great, greater knowledge than, than mine, um, that this is probably about cocaine. Uh, so, um, I mean, it's the weird thing. One of my specialisms, my clinical specialisms, is in addiction, and I'm without wanting to sound big headed, I'm gonna be a bit big headed. I'm shit hot on working with addiction, I just understand it. It's just something that I've worked with for a long time. I've worked in rehabs, I've managed rehabs, um, I've been the clinical supervisor for rehabs, I set up programs in rehabs. Uh, so they're my passion, and and uh, drug and alcohol recovery and addiction recovery is, is my passion. But actually, truth is, I don't know much that much about drugs, not from the kind of the, 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 the dirty end, if you like, or the fun end, whichever way you want to describe it. So uh, I didn't know on looking at the lyrics and listening to this <coughs> that it was about cocaine. Um, or was likely to be about cocaine. So, um, I mean, in my humble origins and my background, you know, we didn't see a lot of drugs, really. Um, you know, you don't really get a lot of cocaine in Sutton Benger. We thought brown ale was a little bit kind of racy so what i find interesting about the song is that for some reason my mind is is going to say, was it, is this about addiction or is this just about kind of somebody that's got into a bit of a habit with this and is you know and it's a kind of like a lifestyle thing because i wasn't on first listening i wasn't entirely feeling the pain of this song but i think what's interesting is it it, it, it go musically and lyrically it goes a bit darker as as you go further in so one or and one of the things that Sydney talks about is paranoia, um, you know, wanting not wanting to kind of keep doing this but doing it again. Um 
This strikes me for some reason. I'm not, I'm not wrong here. It's kind of like either er, quite early stages of an addictive process, or perhaps a physical dependency without the full blown addiction. Um, and there is a difference, and it's quite a, you know it, it, it's something that I hope to cover in another video at some point. Um, addiction, dependency, and habit are three different things. Often they overlap. You know, the three occur at once, but they are three separate things. So is this about addiction? I uh, I love the uh, the I think he's a Canadian doctor of Scottish origin called Jack Dr Jack Cunningham, uh, and he's got a great three point definition of addiction, which I really love. And now a little mini rant here coming up is uh, the modern world of psychiatry and psychology has completely lost the plot in terms of addiction. And if you look at the diagnostic manuals at the moment, you know, they're not even using the words addiction. They, they talk about substance, but they, I don't even know what they call it these days. But I believe in old school addiction. I think addiction is a, a very definite thing. And I think it's a very simple thing to treat. Not an easy thing to treat, but a simple thing to treat because it, we know a lot about addiction. It is real. Sex addiction is real as well. That's another controversy which we'll get into. And this guy is old school. And I quite like old school kind of addiction philosophy because it works, basically. And this uh, guy's got three points to his definition of addiction, which I really like. So the first is uh, it's addiction when it meets all these three. So the first one, number one, continuing to either take the substance or do the behaviour, because addictions aren't just about substances, they're about behaviours, despite negative consequences. So addiction isn't just doing stuff a lot. Okay. The second factor, because somebody that's a, I don't know, a um, concert violinist is going to play the violin a lot <laughs> and they could be accused of being a violin addict. I breathe a lot and you know, I'm guilty of that. I'm breathing all the time, but I'm not an air addict. Okay. So it's only a problem if it's a problem, if it causes negative consequences or if there's a threat of negative consequences. So and number two, uh, and uh, a degree of tolerance. Um, so needing more and more to uh, get the same benefit or the same hit. Now this is where it gets a bit confusing because it sounds a little bit like physical dependence. And addiction is a different thing to physical dependence. This is where they overlap. So um, for example, uh, if you talk about gambling addiction, it might start with a scratch card on a Wednesday and then it might end up in the bingo. <laughs> probably not how most addiction problems start <laughs> ends up going to bingo on a Thursday then it ends up being in the bookies on a Friday and uh, then it ends up escalating and online addiction online gambling and the whole thing kind of you know so somebody somebody with a problem with it was an addictive problem with addiction won't be content with their scratch card on a Wednesday and then they won't be content with their bingo on a whatever it was you get my drift Okay, so it's an increase in frequency or an increase in strength. So if it's a substance, it might be a stronger substance, or it might be another substance. I mean, it might swap from a weaker substance to a stronger substance as well. They talk about gateway drugs. And the third one, which I think is really interesting, is thinking about the source of the addiction at inappropriate moments. So, for example, you're at the birth of your child, and all you can think about is, you know, when you can get away for a drink and maybe you're the mother giving birth to the child. They're the three points of addiction, according to, to Jack, Jack, Dr. Jack Cunningham. I'm not sure whether this song is about addiction, but it may be. It may be about physical dependency because a lot of what's going here, I think, going on here, particularly with the, um, the paranoia, uh, the uh, not being able to sleep, the thoughts buzzing around your head, all that kind of thing. Uh, are the, is this more the aftermath of problematic cocaine use? Okay. So it's interesting. It's, it's, it, it, for some reason, it makes me wonder about that. I mean, I, mean, I suppose it's got me hooked in. I'm, inter I'm interested in the drama of this character that's suffering this and what exactly is going on. You know, are they somebody that's, you know, they're going to knock this on the head tomorrow and, you know, they might kind of um, struggle for a little while, but, but then they'll be fine. Or is this somebody that's in the grip of a serious addiction problem? Maybe the star is. So it's good. I'm kind of hooked into the drama of the song. The other thing which I think is really interesting is as it gets towards the end, it starts talking about wanting to be in someone's arms and it starts to talk about it, sort of, you know, yearning for love, basically. 
and I thought that was really interesting. And this kind of uh, this well, this fits with a lot of things, but it does fit with addiction. And I was I was listening to is a, a one of the YouTube and Patreon channels that I follow, Psychology in Seattle, uh, who are really good. Um, although they use the acronym PISS, which I think is a bit unwise, <laughs> but they're American, so I don't know. Maybe they don't use PISS in the same way that we do. So uh, one of the things that um, that the host of, of that channel was saying uh, was that he thinks addiction could be reframed as an attachment disorder. Um, <laughs> so he thinks you know poor attachment is is the root of all addiction. Now attachment is something that we, we may talk about another time. Attachment is is all about the way a child bonds with their caregivers or doesn't bond with their caregivers and it's about the way that the caregivers relate to the child, mirror the child, are there for the child, support the child or don't. Uh, particularly in the early years of life, so usually years one to three. And there's tons and tons and tons of research at the moment into attachment and the effects that, that, that parenting has in the very early years of a child's life. Uh, parenting in later years of a child's life is also very significant, but all they found is the, the first three particularly, very, very significant. So uh, attachment disorders, and yes, you know, um, it's very seldom that someone with an addiction problem um, hasn't got a lot of trauma, hasn't got neglect, hasn't got abuse in their past, hasn't got parent, you know, parental issues and problems. It's really quite rare. There's usually something going on. Okay, whether you could say that causes an addiction problem or not, I don't know. I, I think that's too simplistic to say. But what's in this, you know, what's in this song is, you know, it is paranoia, regret, guilt, worry, and then it goes into a kind of, a, you know, a yearning to be held. You know, it goes back to, and that's a romantic part. Though, you know, you would assume from the song, but actually. <clears throat> Again, it's just, just the way I emotionally respond to, to this song. I think there is a, you know, a yearning for um, a parental attachment that wasn't there. So that is the twang. Um, I've kind of made myself look like far more of a fuddy-duddy than I think I ever have in my entire life. But there you go, I've been honest and open and shared myself, or shared my shared my vulnerabilities with you. So uh, I hope I haven't offended anybody who talks hip and comes from Manchester and a and all that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> or anyone from Birmingham, uh, or, or anyone at all. If I have, I'm sorry. Um, I, I hope you found that interesting. Um, I'll post the lyrics in the description below. I, I didn't go through them today because there's loads of them. And we will leave it there. Thank you to Lady Venning, Rangi Barnier.